What's going on? What's going on, good people? What's going on, everybody? How is everybody doing this evening? I am Lamar. That is my brother, Casey Fowler, and this is episode 120 of Foul Language Podcast. Hell yeah, man. Like all 120 episodes, you get your accessories right. Put your headphones if you're on. If you're at work, get the kitties to bed because you might just hear some foul language. Let's get it, man. Let's go. Got that right. Roll. Perfect. Perfect. All right, man. So it's that time where we like to talk about what our accessories for tonight's episode, man. And so, you know, we're going to kick it off with you first, bro. What you smoking? What you drinking? All right, so for the drink, uh, the YouTuber mentioned this. It's called Tennessee, Sweet Home Tennessee. It's bourbon from, um, let's see, bourbon from Tennessee and Kentucky. Finished with toasted sugar maple wood. Sounds like something else, but whatever. Um, hey, man, and you then, like your sugar maple wood, man. I'm not here to judge. Um, so, stupid comment aside, so the cigar, um, we talked, uh, I don't remember if it was last episode or the episode before, the next time I got the opportunity, I was going to smoke one right off the truck. It don't get more perfect of an opportunity than this. The shipment of this month came today, so I didn't even put it up. I just took one right out the plastic. What's that shit? Take me out the plastic? So, that's what I did. And I didn't open it yet because I don't, usually I don't give shit about presentation, but this was kind of cool. It's like a blue kind of foil wrapper. Oh, it it's cool. a Illusiono OD Bono Gordo 5x6. This is exactly the large, largest ring gauge I will smoke. So, mm. yeah, there's that. And with that, um, while you're telling us what you got this evening, oh, and it's also a Ribble, the, the whiskey was on sale. Hmm. Gotta get the sales, man. Twenty dollars off, twenty-two dollars off. Mm. So I was like, oh, I almost got two, but I was like, I ain't gonna be greedy. So <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> right. So I'll, I'll take that. I was like, Kevin would be proud. Didn't have a red tag on it, but it was twenty-two dollars. Respect. It was that. still on sale. Right there, it was definitely on sale. Definitely on sale. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna open this guy while you telling us what you got. V cut is the way out. V cut and light. So hopefully by the time you're done, I have it ready. Well, got a lot going on. It's been a while since we recorded, and to be completely honest with you, brother, this might be the last one for a little minute. So I felt like the placencia would be appropriate for said night. So you know, I broke out the placencia from my box, and I still got like six of them bitches, bro. But um, got. Mm-hmm. Is, got this going and I paired with you know my homeboy who made a, another triumphant return man Maker's Mark Maker's Mark fucking Placentius can't go wrong well, have a, um, one. I can't the shit open. so check part. back in by the next segment I'll have it lit We'll be talking about it, and by the next check-in, I will tell you what I think about it. All right, everybody, it is time for the what is best in life or the wibble, as we like to call it. So, brother, for the past, I guess, two weeks, what is best in life? Well, I took that trip down to Augusta, man, to go make sure the house is straight and everything like that. Man, it's pretty straight. My yard looks fucked up, but, you know, I got a plan for that, so I ain't really tripping on that. But, you know, made some moves, got to hang out with the fam. You know, it was a good time laughing with the kids, smoking with my grown kids. It was it was a good time. I enjoyed it, man. I really enjoyed it. Um, Got a lot of fucking work done, a lot of cleaning and shit done and moving and shaking. I was tired as a bitch, but it was a good ride, man. Got there, came back, and... um. Kevin and I had a field trip to some fucking science museum thing um, that Friday after I got back. And, you know, they had like lizards and like a little mini aquarium and you had like a, a dino trail where it's outside with fake dinosaurs and all types of shit. They had a scavenger hunt. Well, like I mean, was, all dinosaurs are like the... Yeah, it was tough. It was, it was, okay. it was tough. Yeah. So cool. that, that, was, that was pretty cool. Um... 
Backlash is uh, tomorrow, so we're excited for that, man. Wrestling fans, what's up? Mm-hmm. I'm ready to see Jay Cargill and Bianca uh, Belair whoop the hell out of the uh, Kabuki Warriors. I'm excited for that match. Um, shit, what else is going on, man? Anime, fucking Blood of Zeus. I just found out it's on the way back. I think like either this week or next week. No, it's next. Yeah, week they pushed it back. Because, so yeah, it was supposed to come out in a couple months. Ago. Yeah. Because my hero comes out tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, I think um, right. Then the Cat Williams shit come out tomorrow. I'm curious to see how that's gonna go. Um, I'm definitely going right. to check that out. See, see how because he could go either way. He could get serious and put everybody on blast, so he could just have a good time and shit be fucking funny as fuck. So well, see, I'm more either way, the fact that it's live on Netflix. That's it. Yeah, that too. That too. That too. Yeah, that too. Um. Shit, what else is going on, man? Oh, we did the the inventory inspection shit for the for the move. So the move is set. The movers are locked in. We're just waiting on the phone call. They should be picking our stuff up in um about about less than less than two weeks now. All our stuff will be picked up, and we'll be taking that big old move to the A of the UG, man. Speaking of AUG, <coughs> Quentin called me this morning. I meant today. That's what was best in life. Anytime I hear from my dog. And he was like, he was hearing two kids talking about, you know, they was getting out of school and it's Friday and they go spinning out of each other's houses. So he was like, shit, man, made me think about you, man, how we'd be so excited to get out of school on Friday and we spinning the night and shit. <laughs> so that shit was cool, man. Fucking, fucking around talking to him. Um, Melanin Warriors have taken a complete break, break on Melanin Warriors, but, you know, it might come back. It might not, guys. Just stay tuned for that. Um my wife has her appreciation live. Unfortunately, she's doing it on her birthday. Um, by the time this come out, it'll be past her birthday. So happy birthday, babe. Um, our niece Tanaja, she's graduating real mm-hmm. soon. I'm making the graduation, graduation party, all that good shit. That's coming up. And it's prom time. So our your nieces, my daughter and niece, their prom is tomorrow. So no. they'll be going, they'll be going to fucking prom and Whoever their prom dates are, they got a little reprieve this year. It's their junior year. But next year, I'm on y'all ass. I'm on y'all ass. I'm going to walk in a fucking house with a rifle looking like a fucking British soldier security person. Shit. Just, it's going to be a good time. No, nah, just bullshit, man. They I, they don't bring no bullshit ass no boys around me. Um, But with that, that's what's best in life, man. How about you? Oh, man. So let's see. Ooh, I meant to write it down, but I didn't. So let's see. Two weeks ago, um, came out. I took Thursday and Friday off, and um, we we were supposed to like hang out and chill and all that good shit. Thursday, it ended up taking the mind to the doctor. Um, he mm-hmm. didn't get all the way over strep, so we had to do with that. But he, he's okay. Um, no, yeah, they said he wasn't contagious or anything, so we sent him back to big air. Um, He's doing good now, so I'm definitely glad about that. Strep is finally damn gone, so excited about that. Um, he met with the ENT good. last week, which was a dumb appointment, but that's a story for another day. Um, $135 wasted. Um, yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, but we did get to spend some time together on Friday. Went to um, one of them places that they sell, like, the shit that Amazon, like, Amazon returns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. they be buying them in bulk and shit like that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they buy them in bulk and then they, you know, do whatever. It's kind of like Ross for Amazon mm-hmm. shit. It's, right, 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 right. We had a store around the corner. It was just like that. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, but it's overwhelming. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was. I mean, let's see. I bought some coffee cups. I, they had this mic, this uh microphone that I was trying to get, but. Like one box didn't have all the pieces, another box didn't have another piece. One was broken that had all the pieces. So I was thinking about putting them just together, but I was like, I don't really feel like it. So um, that was that. Right. I think we went to eat or something. And so there's that. Um, happened. So that was that. Um, I'm trying to say there was something else. We were supposed to go to the range, but that didn't work out for the time. Um, we were hanging out together today. Um, Kim worked from home with the Thursday and Friday, so we were co-working again. But it's always fun when she's there talking shit from the other side of the house. Yo, meeting too loud or whatever. So we got to run. 
Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, Lamar had his uh, kin- uh, pre k graduation, so that was fun. Um, we trying to figure out how we want to get the pictures of everybody. We're thinking about just putting them all together, and like maybe sending out a digital scrapbook or something like that. So we're working on that now. Um, let's see, that was cool. Simone had her last swap which um, is basically their pep rallies or whatever. Right. You know. Swamp romps. Swamp yeah. romps. Yes, so <laughs> um, damn cap right. Well, that, I made it out. Um, don't want to get that much out. Um, so, threw me off for a second. Um, I was like, damn, I can't say cap rock. I'm going to shit up. Find the school zone. Yeah, fuck the shit. All right, that's stupid. Um, so, anyway, so she had, she had her last. Um, so at that, so she had her last thing, and um, she was the. They have like some of the fourth graders do like the um, MC of the thing, so they do MCs in mm-hmm. different parts. She was the first MC, so she was excited about that. So we did that, and then Kim and I were about to leave because I had to actually go into the office for a minute. And then as we we're trying to leave, her teacher stopped us and said, "Hey, um, don't leave yet. Simone's getting bored." So we were like, "Well, damn, you should have." Sent us a damn message and let us know. <laughs> but at the same yeah, time, we were right. excited because she got a she got a uh, an award. It's you, you they, the classroom votes uh, for I guess the the top mm-hmm. student helper conscious. It's community kid, I think it's all the thing. And um, they picked Simone for this time, so that was pretty cool. She was She's a homecoming queen <laughs> for our classroom, basically. Nice, nice, nice. So so that was like cool. It. That was cool. Um, her. Fourth grade graduation is coming up, so that's exciting. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it. I know I mentioned that I put in my remote package, but I can't remember if I said it in an episode or not. But I am hundred percent remote now. It is exciting. Although I had to go into the damn office more in the past month <laughs> than I have in the past six months. So that's stupid. But whatever, it'll be fine. It'll work its way out. I tell you about that in a bit. Um, so yeah, so let's see what else is going on. Um, foul language is not taking a break, it is doing that. No, damn it, I fucked up. Foul language is taking a break. Um, MF, MF and research is not taking a break. Um, we right. broke 500, I think, like last week, mm-hmm. and we're at like 520 now. Yeah, it's uh 521 when I checked the day. So nice, doing pretty nice. good. We are officially monetized, but it's like the lowest level of monetization. monetization. Fuck it. You, don't, you don't get points for ads. It's it's you only get paid if like people like tip you basically is where it's right, at right, right. or you can like sell your merch right now. So um maybe one day. We'll figure that out. Um got some consistency commenters and subscribers, so that's dope too. Um, that's exciting. Got a video coming out. I think Sunday, maybe. Got a couple working on a couple series, so that's fun. Um, let's see. Uh, I there was one more thing. Something. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's it. Oh, well, we talked about that. Later. Um. So yeah, I think that is all. Oh, my light that broke. I upgraded it. I didn't buy a new light. I bought a new housing for it. So it's getting a nice gentle glow now. So I'm appreciating that. So I forgot you told me that broke. Yeah, it broke a long time ago, but I had been rigging mm. it. The, a lot of duct tape, binder clips. Yeah, it works. It did. <laughs> it worked well. Okay. And so it was hanging on though. Um, but yeah, so there's that. It's, it's working well now. I'm going to upgrade a little bit more piece by piece. So that's good. So with that, I think that's all for the people. That's what's up. So one more thing, man. Um, so Keontae, my other son, um, the middle son, I guess you could say, man, my, my second oldest, however you want to call it, but he had his um final concert with the advanced band at Pearl uh middle school today, or Pearl Junior High, or whatever the fuck they want to call it. But um he had it, and it was it was cool, man. I really enjoyed all of them, actually, man. Like they had me tapping my feet and bobbing my head because you got to sit there for the whole thing. You got to let the, the beginner band play, the intermediate band play, and the advanced band play. But it's a grade for them, actually. Yeah. So, you know, they got they get graded on like 
how they play, how they act when they're in the crowd, all this other stuff. And, you know, it, it was all right, man. And it just there to support my boy, even though you could barely fucking see him because where he, the saxophones are. I'm just like, that's yeah. some bullshit. So, so we in there like this, like we got fucking lightsabers trying to take a fucking picture and shit. Shit was kind of fucking funny. All right, there were two things I forgot to add. Um, <laughs> Balloons. That's, that's appropriate. So um, Simone got selected. She was one of a handful of students in her grade that got selected to represent the school in uh, an art exhibition. So some of her art. Hell yeah. Went up uh, um, for the district, so they had like a district art show. So you went to go see that last week, and uh, she had three pieces in the art show. So I was counting, and I was like three out of forty-three for the whole school. So I was like impressive, good job. Yeah, and those were the ones that that Kim put those in the group chat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah, those those okay, hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah. 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 Fuck yeah, go niece. That's my niece. Get it, girl. Proud of you. Definitely excited about that. Um, and then the last one, um, I mentioned that it's like a year ago plus that I found out that my student loans were going to get uh, given. They finally zero balance. They are oh, finally zero shit. balance. Now I'm waiting oh, for them to per the lawsuit. They're supposed to reimburse me what I paid. So I told Kim I'm gonna call him up and be like Rihanna and be like, "Bitch, better have my money." So I'm waiting on that. <laughs> Pay so me, I'll would you? Owe oh, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm waiting on that. Shit, so, yeah. Where we going, man? Vacation on you, right? Vacation on you, right? Where we going? Oh, no. Not all. It's going into the index fund, brother. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, Mine is not as profound as my brother's because that's some dope shit. Shout hey, out to my good. An amazing, amazing fucking job. Simone, I'm so proud of you. Um and the, the the student loan shit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hand clap. So mine is, and I've been meaning to watch it for like a long while, but we finally started Rise of the Planet of the Apes. That shit's fucking dope. It's just amazing. It's a great fucking movie. I really enjoyed it. So we're watching them all. The old ones? Okay. The the very first one when they remade it. The, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're actually really good. Yeah, yeah. Good as fuck. I, so we watching I those. don't care about the, the humans at all. No, fuck the humans. It's a. It's all about fucking Maurice and fucking fucking Kobo. God damn it. Well, <laughs> yeah, we're watching that shit. It's just been dope, man. Me and the boys watched it by ourselves. The Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And I was like, oh no, yeah. my wife got to come in on this one. So we well, watched the new one's coming out like, too, right? Yeah, so we want to watch them all and then go see the new one. Exactly, exactly. Cool, cool, cool. So. Watching those, man, I've been wanting to watch all them bitches for the longest. So I can never find all three in succession anywhere, but now that they're on streaming apps, we're watching them bitches. Shit's is fucking great. Caesar, man, that's that's that dude. Man. That motherfucker. No! We, everybody walking around the house doing that shit, man. We used to be around, I don't know if you got to it, you'd be like, yep, yep. <laughs> So that's what's best in life. Cool. Cool. All right. So we talked about this or alluded to it a couple times. Is that, you know, everybody asks for their kid, hopes for their kid, or thinks their kid is smart. It's a great thing. Let me get that out there first. Fuck yeah. Um, but I don't want to get, I don't want to make it seem like I don't think it's a good thing. But with every good thing, there are some negative things. So, what are do you think some of the disadvantages of having a smart kid? Well, the first one says they fucking homework because then it makes you feel it makes you feel stupid some fucking times. Or you cussing out the teacher because you don't understand why the curriculum is this way. And I say that to say math with the fucking blocks and shit and how they teach them how to add and subtract and. And all that, that shit is fucking stupid. It's dumb as fucking hell. Whoever thought about that shit, it probably was a good idea in their fucking head, but it's fucking dumb. Like the it's easiest stupid, fucking but way is once you get it. Yeah, well, once you get it, it's smooth. I mean, I understand it now, but you know what I'm saying. I'm just I'm overall, it's I, I think it's just fucking yeah. stupid. And you know, so, you know, just some things that you don't know how to do sometimes when your your kids are you know older like you know my my age my my kids range from 20 to to seven so they're and they're all smart as fuck 
And there's just certain fucking things that they do. I'm like, well, goddamn, how the fuck you do that? Hey, man, show me. Hey, show me how to do this before I beat your ass. Show me how to do it. <laughs> That's a joke. But um, something else is the money. When your kids are smart and they're doing all this smart kid shit in school and stuff like that, the shit costs money. You got trips. You got fucking debates and meet and visits and all types of fucking shit. You get in shirts. I don't know how many goddamn shirts I done fucking paid for for fucking shit. At, right after a fucking fundraiser, I'm still paying these motherfuckers money. That's the, probably the, the biggest disadvantage. And I'm, I know you're going to get into that shit real heavy in a fucking minute of having a smart kid because the shit costs too goddamn much. It just costs too goddamn much. The, the next thing is you have to watch what you say. Especially if you're married and you have kids around, you know, like Simone's age, Keanu, Kevion's age, Keontae, he's 13, so you know what the generation is right now. They ain't nothing hidden, but you and you chilling with your wife and y'all got your little in your windows and shit that the kids don't understand. The little smart fuckers don't understand it now. Like, it's, ew, daddy. Shut the fuck up. How you think you got here? How you think you got here? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you can't do shit like that because they're fucking they're so fucking smart and intelligent it's it's beautiful and amazing and annoying all at the same fucking time it's crazy playing jeopardy no george washington didn't cross the connecticut he crossed the delaware daddy i'm just using that as an example i know where the fuck uh that slave owner fucking came from i know where the fuck he came from but, um, just use that as an example man but it's but it is a disadvantage, but overall, I know this is supposed to be about disadvantages, but overall, it's fun. It's so exciting. It, it makes life worth it to see that something that you created is disintelligent and knowing the potential that they have. And if they live up to that potential, they, they could go and do any fucking thing in the fucking world they want to. But it's just a fucking expensive because they want to go and do everything in the world that they fucking want to. Um, with that being said, brother, preach. I'm gonna let you right, come up right there. <laughs> Thank you. Want to give an honor? <laughs> but um, yeah. So right there, the worst too is when the teacher calls you. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we are interested in da 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 da. Into the finals. <laughs> And I know it's going to be, because see, my problem, both of my kids are smart, which is kind of scary. Um, even when Lamar was young, like, the daycare would be like, he's scary smart. It's scary smart. Um, and sometimes stuff he says it's true. But with Simone right now, because he's in school, it, it's a different kind of ball. It's a different kind of different kind of activity. Right now, there's art type stuff. Because I mean, and what's interesting about Simone is she's both academically smart and artistically smart. So yeah, oh hell yeah. So there, there's this and there's that. And they want to do this and they want to do that. And they want to go here. They want to go there. And they want to do this program. And then this case and that. And, and and in my head, just the dollar sign, ching 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 ching. And man. But I mean, you support them and you do what you can to get them what you want or what they need. And then the other side of that is outside of like school and stuff, is you have to be careful what you say because it can and will be used against you in the court of children. And not like in a disrespectful way either, but it's more like a they broke down what you said. And Simone is real little too, which is sometimes. Mm. So it's like you'll say that, yeah, um, there's not a there's a uh you, you'll say like um you can do something in a few or something like that or i'll think about it or whatever and you'd be like it don't mean that. and um it, it's crazy and another example of that is uh it's not my kids but it's a uh, uh, a guy from church he, he's got two boys and mm. one of his sons both of his sons do this shit really his son, man, they so damn cool, man. When he roll up on him, he'd be like, so damn. And I'd be like, I'm, I just stand there sometimes when he'd be talking to him. I just stand to wait and listen to see what he's going to ask. Because um, 
there was one time he asked because his Popeyes is right across from the church and they like walking to Popeyes. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, something, something, something about it. And he gave him an answer like, we'll see. And he was like, that don't mean nothing. So I can work with that. And <laughs> so he, he pressed him off and then later on he just said, just like, no Popeyes. So they don't forget. No, hell no. They use what you say against you. And, and again, like I said, it's not disrespectful. It's, you know, if you say if you're going to do something three weeks ago, two weeks and six days, they will remind you of you said said thing on said time. Doing stuff. And then on the other side, it's expensive. Touching on it, not only that there's school things, there's things, just things that you have to buy, like Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, books. Mm-hmm. I mean, Simone is artsy, and so she wants these expensive markers that do expensive shit and help with shading and all this other shit. And then there's probably just like, you know, you can get it, don't like it, but you don't want to limit because you see what people can do with these markers. And yeah. it's amazing what they can do, and she can tap into that at the best, because you definitely don't want to block the skill. Um, and so you, you find things that cost way more than you would have ever expected them to cost. You know it. We talked about the, your, your son's instruments. So you you, you know it. So Yep. I was thinking about that saxophone the whole time you were talking. I knew you were. I knew that. That shit on my credit report, though. <laughs> man, no joke, man. But you, you yeah, want to no. know. So, I mean, there's that. Um, the other thing is Man, when like I mean, the big thing is really they just use their words against you sometimes, and it's not. I I, I really want to emphasize to some of the people who out there might be watching be like, "Oh, you just got a smart ass kid that thinks they know everything," and that's not really the case. But you know, sometimes they do have a a, a significant grasp of things, mm-hmm. and because they have that grasp of things, they don't have the total picture. And sometimes with the mold, especially. Like she gets frustrated with the not computing of why a certain thing won't be the way that it is. It's like she'll know A through Y, but won't know mm-hmm. Z. And it won't happen until Z happens. She doesn't necessarily understand it. She's like, I'm going to the way there. I don't get it. Oh, and then the other thing is like we we gave Simone, or we told we give an allowance for doing certain things around the house. Mm-hmm. I swear she'd be in the back with like the calculator, like, you owe me. <laughs> Hundred and thirty-two dollars and fifty-seven cents. Um, interest is compounding at three percent monthly. Um, please pay the fee. I would like to do these things with the funds that you are owed to. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mrs. Lamar. <laughs> yes, sir. Is you see the things that you think and like. Because I see her how her thought process works, I get it, I understand it. In a lot of ways, it is me. I just like, I want to be mad. I do. But because I think the same way, I can't even be mad at you. So, right. Let's go track down someone. Um, um, and, and I mean, I wonder too, it's going to be interesting as they get older. Um, but the other thing is, I mean, they still be stupid kids, so, I mean, there's always that. And with Simone, I mean, sometimes I think when she gets to that point of she doesn't know a thing, it kind of frustrates her. So yeah. having to get her off that ledge. Lamar, too. I mean, when he's building, I mean, he's really, like, the shit that he builds with his blocks to be so young is really intricate. Like, we'll come in pre-K, and he's got, like, this big-ass tower up. And, yeah. Damn, dude. Wow. He was on a mission, goddammit. Yeah, he might be an architect to make it. He very well might. And then, like, there'll be one piece that he'll be trying to get the lay a certain way and it can't, and it'll fall and he'll get pissed off. And trying to say, like, trying to get them to realize to celebrate the successes and not focus on the failures. That's a hard one, too, for them because they are so used to being successful and so used to achieving. When it doesn't happen, that failure, I think, a lot of times puts a lot harder. So, Picking them up and helping them understand that it's just a lot of good shit. Um, is, is I think even harder versus those kids. It's like, well, I gave it my best. All right, let us know if you have a smart kid 
what do you think some of the I mean let's we'll have some positive in there too. So what do you think of the good and the bad of having a have a smart kid? We'd like to hear that. All right, man, how are your accessories treating you? Although I think I know the answer. Hey man, it's it's great, man. Like it's it's a placentia. Like I've said before when I had it, I have not met a liquor yet that does not pair well with the placentia for me. Uh everything I, I've drunk, tequila, vodka, whiskey, brandy, fucking Hennessy with uh a placentia and the shit's fucking amazing. I, I absolutely enjoy it. One of the greatest Christmas presents ever. <laughs> but it, it's really it I'm enjoying it, man. It's really good, man. And um just so we talk about accessories since I'm retired now. I got my pen right now and vaping also. So we got to vape just to, you know, keep the atmosphere, atmosphere in, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. How about you, man? You're going to have some poetry for your ass to get the quote. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So this is a cigar. I finally got it out. Okay. Oh, that ribbon is dope. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, real, it's real. yeah. So good. Um, the the Kennedy. It's actually really good. I didn't realize the part the proof, the 110 proof. So nice. It's right in where I like it to be. Um, definitely a good call. Um, it's definitely punching above that 33 that I paid for it. So mm-hmm. and pairing's good. So Luciano does good cigars too. So they're not in my top top brands, but they're usually pretty consistent. So. If they are your favorite, that's not a bad cigar. And the Kennedy's a whiskey, right? Yeah, it's a, so it's a, it says it's Kentucky and Tennessee bourbon whiskey. So. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I'd love to try that. Yeah, it's not bad. If you can find it, yeah. You can probably Definitely find it. That's no problem. Like it. I thought about this topic, man. I was watching, I was going through this little phase. I am retired now, guys, as I've said a million fucking times already. So I was going through this phase uh, about a week or so ago when I was just watching 90s black people movies and TV shows and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So I was watching the movie uh, The Brothers with Bill Bellamy, Shamar Moore, D.L. Hewley, mm-hmm. Morris Chestnut. I was watching that shit and I watched The Wood after that. And I was like, damn, like these shit's really, these movies really have power, you know what I'm saying, for the, the black community. Mm-hmm. And then seeing how it's kind of switching to it's going to be this horror of fucking conspiracy theory shit or it's just some old ratchet shit or some hood shit. Um, I just want to talk about how, how they've changed or have they changed at all. What do you think? Um, I think there's more, I think is what I'll say. Um, and I think because of that more, I think there's a lot of a variety out there. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's still some good movies. There's some real good biopics. I mean, there was a, I mean, and they're not necessarily always, I mean, they're not like the black movie that's just, um, you know, done by a black producer and all of that shit. I mean, there's movies about black historical people. There's movies yeah. talking black shit. So, I mean, I think there's more of that. So, I mean, I think there's more opportunity to learn about certain figures of history, but I think because of the way streaming is set up right now, I mean, you won't have a, you won't you don't have as much of an opportunity to sit down and you know on a Saturday after Soul Train watch one of those movies because you can make your choices for streaming and you can pick whether you want to stick with the ratchets and and consume that fast food or you want to find some of those good documentaries and things like that. Like a lot of the shit that you talk about on like Melanie Warrior. There's like documentaries and like movies and things like that yeah. that cover a lot of those topics. And but it's not spoon fed to you. You have to know where it's at. You have to mm-hmm. have those streaming services. You have to find them. You have to watch them. So I think that's probably the biggest change is hmm. that you can see them or not see them depending on what you choose to consume. I mean, just like music. I mean. You know, yeah. we talk about like, oh, the music the shit now is the lowest common denominator now. We got we gotta. That's true. But there's a lot of motherfuckers that's out here rhyming right now, too. So, but you got to know what to look. And I mean, you put me on to some people that have been spitting. And so I think that same thing applies. I think it, it takes more work on the viewer now than it did in years past. And I mean, it's not those obvious, um, hey, uh, this black movie's coming out, yada, yada. yada. Because the other thing too is 
movies changed. I mean, you're not necessarily having movies going to the theaters as much as they are not as long. I mean, because there's been movies that have been out like, oh, damn, I missed that came out. Like, um, I was watching with mom a whole movie on George Foreman. And I didn't even know that movie came out. Mm. Was that good? I know it was, it was on Netflix. It's good. It's okay. It's okay. Because mm. Mike Tyson um, was fire. That shit was fire. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good stuff out there. And I mean, but I mean, the one difference too is like, you don't like those movies, like those, like The Woods and stuff like that from like the 90s and 2000s. There may not be as many of those traditionally. And there might be again, I might be missing them, but I think there's some with bigger budgets now that you see. I mean, and then talking TV, I mean, I think like I don't have BT, so there's a lot of them on BT. So I'm like, mm-hmm. it looks pretty interesting. Um, there's the. Uh, Miss hmm? Pat showed that shit good. Yeah, I heard that was good. Um, then there's also like um, there's a few like the Upshaws. I heard that's pretty good on Netflix. Um, mm-hmm. They're they're there, but like I said, you may miss them, and it's easier to miss them. And I think that for me, I think that's the really the biggest change. I won't say that they're gone or they're not making them like they used to or anything like that. I just think you got to do more work to find them and know about. Them. And I think that's kind of where I'll. Uh, and, uh, what about you? What you think? <clears throat> well, it's interesting to say you got to do the more work to find them because the the fact of the matter is the majority is not trying to do their work to find them. They want to see the right. the snowfalls right. and the BMF, which I enjoy BMF myself. But I mean, you know, they, that, the them. hood shit, and, yeah, you know, the hood shit, the the ratchet shit. It's some show they my my daughters watch is called Baddies or some bullshit like that, like. <laughs> Um, you know, they, they're they more into that. And what really made me um, go to this topic is because you see in Brothers, you got these successful black men that's trying to find love and shit like that. You don't, in my opinion, you don't really see movies like that unless it's one of the, you know what I'm saying, lower end Tubi movies. Shout out to everybody that's doing that thing on Tubi. Shout out to Lil Will too, man, because he's in the Tubi movie. I can't remember the name of it right now, but Brothers in the uh, Tubi movie. Shout out to you. But um, you gotta uh, let me know what that is, and I check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll look at my phone after this, man, because we was talking about it uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, but it, it's it's you, they're gravitating more towards that type of shit versus how it was back in the day, where you had the TV shows like The Cosby's, um, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, you know, Family Matters. You seeing these successful, highly melanated people. And the, these atmospheres, and you're you're not really getting that as much no more. I feel like with the 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 shows that are like broadcast over social media. Let me say that because you're right, you're still, sure you're still there. Yeah, you're still there. You just gotta dig. But the shows that are not being broadcasted like crazy, like you said, like um, Abbott Elementary. Um, it's getting it's getting pumped, but it's not getting pumped like BMF is getting pumped. Or well, it's also I wouldn't is, consider that a black. That's more of an ensemble. Because I, I was thinking about that too. Because mm-hmm. uh, Quinta Brunson, I think is how you say her name. She's yeah. black, and I mean, there's a, there's a large component of black characters on there. But I got you. Go ahead. And then you know, a lot of them now, like, really, what's the message? Like, um, not not knocking uh, Peel or whoever does the movies, like Get Out and stuff like that. Amazing fucking work. All of it's fucking amazing. But is it is geared more towards um, reading between the lines and conspiracy theories? It's not straight up punching the fucking face like boys in the fucking hood was, man. Where it's you know what I'm saying? It's hood shit. But it's on a fucking deeper level than just some gang bangers fucking shooting each other and fucking selling drugs. It was way fucking deeper than that. And that's why I appreciate shows like the the Miss Pat show that, you know, actually shows what really happens in a family. Upshaws is the same fucking way because shit like that really happens in our communities too, man. But you don't really have those successful highly melanated people shows that are just broadcast. I found a show that came out in 2021 that me and Janae K watch called The Johnsons, and that's about everyday life for black brothers who's friends, and their last name is fucking Johnson, and they're all successful, like tech companies, real estate, uh, a photographer, and then you got that one friend that's just trying to figure, you know, just real fucking shit for us, you know what I'm saying? Instead of the, we got these BBLs and these, um, these, these fake boobs and all this other shit, and we're gonna fucking fight in a fucking outdoor fucking diner all the fucking time. 
Or mm -hmm. you got the I'm the biggest fucking dope boy out here talking to every fucking Colombian when I only had two nickels to rub together and in two fucking weeks I done made it all the way up to one of the top drug dealers of the fucking projects, but I'm still in the projects. Like they're not showing the 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 positive aspect that the, the positive thing that we are, because we have those out there, you know what I'm saying? Like live a single. I just put Janeke on live a single. You got fucking um lawyers and fucking the dude cows like a stock broker or some shit like that you know what i'm saying stuff like that i don't feel like you're seeing anymore and yeah absolutely a change and the last thing is the tv shows motherfuckers was really repping fucking hbcu shit like every fucking episode you saw that shit on fresh prince you saw that you saw that shit on live a single martin like they was always was martin. Some, yeah yeah, yeah Martin, like it was always like yeah. repping that shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't really see it no more. But mm -hmm. people are still trying to, you know, they, they do stuff on the outside with the HBCUs, I'm seeing, but you're not really seeing nobody really pump that shit up front. So has it changed? Yeah. And with the climate and how everything is, yes, yeah, certain things, I guess, have to change if you want to keep making money. I ain't going to say it has to change because of society. But it may have to change because you had to keep making money. But at the end of it, I miss them fucking shows like that. Because the wood, the wood is a fucking classic. Um, to me, Brothers is a fucking classic. Minister Society, Boys in the Fucking Hood. Hell, um South Central. South Central was another one that was fucking really impactful for the fucking black community, man. And um, I think it has changed and hopefully it'll get better, but I don't see it. Well, I mean, I think. If you look at, I think, the volume of those types of movies, I think they're still there. But to my same point, it's for every one of those, it's 15 of the <laughs> BBL ratchet, which exactly. before it might have been a one to one, one to one ratio back in the day. Right, right. So, right. and I mean, it's, again, people consume fast food, and like people don't necessarily like, um, like you were saying, that the people level read between the lines. I enjoy that shit. Like, I love something that may have an ambiguous ending that you have to maybe watch more than once, listen mm -hmm. to somebody's opinion on it, see how they see it versus how you see it. Um, like us, us is amazing. Like, if you just sit and watch us and then think about the ramifications of us. Like what it's saying, not like not the little story. Little story is good too, but mm -hmm. what it's what the symbology is behind, you know, the other what, what the other upside down. I forgot what I forgot what the um, world was called, but the, the doppelgangers and shit. Fascinating, mm -hmm. man. So I, I love that kind of stuff. The other thing I'll say is there's also a lot of that good positive shit on YouTube too. So um, if you want to see a lot of those positive. I mean, and it's not always, you know, fic, uh, you know, like works of fiction. It's like, you know, uh, finance stuff, or real estate stuff, or cooking mm -hmm. stuff. It, it's a lot of that stuff there because I think the type of media has changed. And then uh, yeah. again, hidden gems that are out there. There, when you talk about like successful stuff, there's a sh a movie on Netflix. I can't remember what it's called. Is it Lisa Manchin? I can't remember what it is, but basically, the family owns a barbecue spot. And okay. the expectation is that the son is going to um, oh, take over, you know, go out, and but mm -hmm. he wants to be a small yay. And mm -hmm. uh, what, what the hell we got this barbecue shop that's been right, 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 and the legacy, and and that's I mean, that's a story that I don't think could be told, um, you know, say 20, 30 years ago because you weren't you weren't seeing that kind of thing. So true. I mean, I think that's kind of cool. That's interesting, actually. But uh, I mean, there, there's a lot. Again, I still maintain it. It's, it's still out there. I think it's still out there in the same amount. I just think that the amount of fast food ranch bullshit is exceeded. I think that's grown way more than other stuff. So I think it makes it seem like it's a smaller group than it really is. So that, that's that part. Yeah. And then the only thing I got left to say is. When it comes to stuff that could be groundbreaking for the culture or the community mm -hmm. and TV specifically, and there's two shows I'm thinking about right now that it got canceled. Like they was like, hell no, fuck that shit. We're not doing that shit. Yeah. Um uh the underground, which was an amazing yeah. fucking uh yeah. amazing fucking show. Yeah, I don't really watch slave shit because that shit pisses me off to mm -hmm. up here some fucking where. 
but that was a great fucking show and the way it ended they you know what i'm saying the people the powers that be didn't want that you know what i'm saying they didn't want to see us fighting back for lack of a better term i don't know what else to say about that one but and then love Lovecraft Country was the same fucking way. The way yeah. that, and I don't know if you ever finished Lovecraft Country or not. But I didn't watch it because I know it didn't, you know, what it got canceled. Yeah. So I didn't want to get Another, invested. Yeah, you would have been pissed. Another amazing ass show, amazing ass take on the way things really are and how it's perceived and how much power our people have. If you was to watch it, you'll you'll see like, oh shit, this motherfucker was the, the that, that was the motherfucker right there. But, you know, they counsel that shit. The shit actually has power that's not um, leading us down the, the the rabbit hole of ignorance. They, they try to fucking counsel the shit. And I'm just, I'm just like, God damn. I yeah. get the check, but fuck. So what do you guys think? Uh, are there any that you're watching now? You can put us on. I mean, I heard Godfather Harlem is good. Um, yeah, I've seen like two episodes so far. That shit is good. Uh, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there. So let us know. I heard I was kind of leery on um, the Fresh Prince reboot. I won't watch it. But see, I heard I heard a take on it, and they kind of broke down the characters, why they are where they are, and why they act the way they do, and why it's actually a better show than you would initially give it credit. Unlike good times, that reboot is fucking hot. Track. That was some bullshit. Um, that was some bullshit. That was. That was, that was we'll was say that. Shit. We'll say that. <clears throat> All right, everybody. So we either, depending on how it works out with the edit, we have already started this topic, or we about to start it now. Um, for those that have been around for a while, for those that are listening, and those that are new. Random thoughts is just our opportunity to touch on shit that may not take a full um, topic of time, but just to cover some of the things that may have caught us, like, um, you know, um, the Ultimas are bad, and my brother got a Tultima, a Tultima and shit like that. Hey, man, and, fuck um, you. It's, it's a goddamn <laughs> rogue. It's a goddamn rogue. That's what it is. Like so we'll Talk. start. Um, so if, if we didn't start, we were talking about anime. So there's that. But if we didn't start, we'll start with uh, talking about um, good times. So now that it's been out, it's been out for a little while. Um, I tried to watch three, at least three episodes. I made it to one. Um, what's so Same. interesting is everybody talks about like um, the original characters, the original cast is voicing characters. There's also a lot of black actors voicing some of those characters in there. So JB Smooth. Think, yeah, JB Smooth, Free Summer. Um, there's a whole bunch of comedians. It's a lot of people in there. So um, my question is always did they, did they see what's going on? Are they cool with that too? So like did did you watch an episode? Yeah, I watched the first one, man. I, I and and it was it pissed me off. Like at first, I was like, "All right, let's see what it got." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like I told, like I said on when we talked about it the first time, I was expecting like a Family Guy kind of feel. So I, sure. I, I was ready for that with uh, Seth MacFarlane bitch ass. Mm -hmm. yeah, Seth MacFarlane bitch ass. Seth mm -hmm. MacFarlane bitch ass. Sorry, I had to go ahead and repeat that a couple of times. But um, I was ready for it, and um, as I'm watching this developing, I'm like. This is every fucking black stereotype mm -hmm. ever in a fucking bowl. And that shit was pissing me the fuck off. Like, it was really infuriating me. You had somebody talking about something about child. He got to pay his child support or some shit in the first episode. Mm -hmm. um, the roaches was the topic in the first episode. Being black in a Roach project. Was in, yeah, the, the fucking singing. The, the worship and white Jesus and all that other shit. Like, it was all there in one fucking bubble on the first episode. And I was fucking pissed. I was fucking angry. Good thing I had, I was high first, or otherwise, I'd be motherfucking pissed. I, I, I would have been fucking even madder than what I was then because that shit was just fucking ridiculous, man. The way they fucking, um, portrayed our people like and and it's the stereotypes that's still going on like this is what countries not just here in america but this is what countries see black people as just these broke ass 
trying to motherfucking make it. We sell drugs. We got gold teeth. We kill each other type shit. And that's what they're fuck they promoting with the fucking good time show. And it pissed me the fuck off. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. The jokes weren't funny. The animation was bad. I mean, there, there was really no redeeming quality. Like, I would have respected it better if it had not been called Good Time. Like, I feel like they only did that barely just to tie it in and just to, like, nostalgia bait, basically. I mean, you had them right. singing the song in the beginning. You mm-hmm. got them singing damn, damn, damn every time they turned around. And I knew yeah. that shit was going to happen, bro, at the end of the shit. I knew it. I said it on the fucking episode. I knew they was going to do that bullshit. Fuck them. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. That shit was terrible. Kim watched like two minutes and she was like, I ain't watching this shit. Shout out to you, sis. Mm-hmm. I ain't making it through the episode. But I hope, though, so the one thing that worries me, so remember, I don't know if you remember, there was a Velma spinoff. Um, yeah, about a year it's on Max. Yeah, and so a lot of people watched it to hate watch it. Mm. And so I watched, we watched it, we tried to watch some of it to see if, like, you know, it was just getting hate from all your far right type people who were like, oh, it's so woke and all that shit to see mm. if, like, you know, because sometimes it happens. I mean, you know, they get up in arms about something and when it finally drops, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, like X, X-Men uh, 97. They were worried so much about um, them saying that um, Morph was non-binary. I think I think it was non-binary. Um, yeah. They were so mad about that, but you don't hear anybody talking about that now. Um, good shit is good. That's it. But no, it was just, it was just horrible. Um, so with Velma, it was just bad. Like it wasn't good. She wasn't likable as a character. It was boring. It was stupid. The plot twist was dumb. The story was stupid. Like, they try to be a little satirical in the beginning, and it's not. You change core elements of the characters, and it's just bad, because so many people hate watching it. It got views. It got, um, you know, ratings and all that shit. And so they mm-hmm. they brought it back for a second season, so I hope that it's back for good times. Like, I actually put on dislike, uh, and I don't ever read something on Netflix. And I was like, I don't know what to show that. Damn. Yeah, I hope they don't, because that shit's some bullshit. Yeah. But there's that pocket, that same pocket I was talking about when we was talking about uh black movies and TV shows. They fucking love it. Mm-hmm. I guarantee it. They fucking mm-hmm. love it. That mm-hmm. shit is fucking hilarious to them. And it's it's not to me. Like mm-hmm. what you think that, about the uh, Kendrick Lamar uh crap? Oh well, man, them, Euphoria. Now. Both of them now. I haven't heard, no. have heard the second one yet. I just found out it was the second one today. But Kendrick did what Kendrick does. Like, I knew that shit was coming. Um, Tangy's Tang- boyfriend, Nikita, me and him was going kind of back and forth kind of about it um, on Facebook or whatever. But I'm like, man, Kendrick is going to devour this dude. And he did. Like, talking about that man. So I'm, I'm a... You don't know nothing about being a good father. Uh, <laughs> you don't know nothing about that. Like, he was talking about the kid and shit. And, like, he just went in on fucking and, Trey, bro. And I think everybody who did, I mean, and you're entitled to your opinion. But I think for those that really didn't like it, I think it's because it's not the kind of diss you're expecting. Right. It's not that, you that bopper shit. It's not that, that, that ether, hit him up, take right. over, where I'm really going at you hardcore. I mean, it's like, my dude said, I'm going to I'm gonna explain that more in eight bars. Eight bars later, he's like, oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. Destroy and, them. Like, and it's just one down. of those, like, and I know they say a lot of Kendrick Lamar fans are like, oh, you don't like it because you don't understand it. Like, I, there could be something to that. Um, But at the same True. time, like, once you, you break down like some of the this that he's given, like Jay he was fucking with Pusha T, his abs fake, he's uh he wanted to be a bad bitch. Um I heard somewhere that sexy red took that as a shot and um she trying to get back into it too. Like that ain't what she, she wanted. better stay out of it. <laughs> she she stay and but she didn't hear the weird thing though, he wasn't dissing her at all. If J. Cole apologized he already knew what the fuck was about to happen. 
He knew it. He knew what the book was. Yeah, they that. said J. Cole was over there enjoying the sun. Glad he apologized and got out. Yeah, of yeah, because he knew it was coming. They were supposed to do an album, him and Kendrick, a while ago, man. Mm-hmm. Like he knew what the fuck was Drake was getting. Oh motherfucker, let me, let me push that shit back. I'm good. I'm good. But, but everybody is just... is because Drake is so commercial. I don't think this is gonna hurt him any. He he's a pop star, man. He's good. Yeah, I think he I think he's gonna be fine, like commercially, but I think those are like this hip hop, he's gonna be like yeah. Yeah, like now, that hood now, shit. Like his face card ain't gonna be good nowhere. Like he gonna now try I will to come say back. His, his dishes weren't bad. I mean, his his, his response no. wasn't bad. What's it was um, push ups or some shit or yeah. give me fifty yeah. whatever it's called. That shit was good. Yeah, like right. I'm not good. a great fan at all, but I give credit when credit is due. It wasn't a bad song. But, it wasn't a bad diss. Um, and even the, the, the one where the one where he had uh, with the Tupac AI and the uh, Snoop AI. Mm-hmm. I liked what he was doing. That, that was unique. I, yeah, it was, it, was it, it was creative. But I like the idea. I mean, he did hit with the cease and desist from two blocks of state. Yeah, exactly. But I ain't mad at him. I seen that shit coming. But mm-hmm. I mean, the original fucking Euphoria was like what? Because Keontae listened to it too. He said it was like nineteen minutes originally, and they mm-hmm. cut it down to like six. Yeah, it's like six minutes. That's it. And then Charlemagne, the whole town was like, Drake got two weeks to respond. Drake got a week to respond. No, motherfucker. He went into his fucking war chest, pulled out a goddamn axe, and threw that bitch at motherfucker Drake ass, man. That shit was fucking out. He's over there doing wheels and shit, man. Yeah, that shit was fucking outstanding, man. I thought it was great. Man, I thought it was great for somebody who enjoys hip hop. Um, there's just so many levels to it, even to the point to like the back. Like, I had to listen to the breakdowns of it too, because the the part where it's in it's backwards mm-hmm. at the very beginning, and it's so what he said. I don't know if you know it, but the, like the beginning that's the backwards speech. It's um, it's a it's a spot from the Wiz where Richard Pryor comes out and they expose him as a wizard, and he's like, everything they say about me is true. No, like they were saying, I didn't. Every, yeah, it, like that's what that line is. So it starts with him basically saying, "He's a fraud. He's fake." He said, "I hate everything about you. About I hate you. how you walk. <laughs> I hate how you talk." I said, "God damn!" Like then he came to me and I got more important shit to deal with than worrying about responding to you. He said, "You signed to a." Uh, who signed to him? Who signed to him? Mm-mm. Now, when I heard that part, I said, "Bro, don't don't bring Weezy we in it. Weezy each you, Kendrick." Now, that would be a good one. Oh. Weezy we eat him. Yeah, I mean that would be a better one to me. It would be, yeah. but that would be yeah. more debatable to me. Uh, Lil Wayne will come out on top on that one. I, Lil Wayne all day. Lil Wayne is like, even when he wasn't really popping like that and his music was still going, like shit he said was fucking, he was like Kendrick, it was like Kendrick Lamar at that time in my opinion, just a little bit more Southern. It was a good shit, yeah. man. But, That's um, going to be fun to see how that goes. And it seems like it's going to remain peaceful or to some degree. Right now, yeah, not the, not the Chris Brown and Quavo shit. That shit getting fucking Chris Brown to ate that motherfucker. Oh, you got ate by a singer, bro. Like, he said it in the song too. He said it. <laughs> you can't. Oh, yo, that that now that right. You got there. ate by a singer, man. Was that like if you wanted that, you know, eat their hit them up type that kind of this? You listen to Chris Brown. This Quavo. He went. And Quavo, I heard Quavo's too. I did too. But, but Chris Brown destroyed that man. Like, yeah, yeah. motherfuckers don't realize Chris can fucking rap though. I've known yeah. that for about a good five, six years yeah. now that Chris Brown actually can fucking rap. And that motherfucker yeah. went in on his motherfucking yeah. ass. It's, and then so, uh, Jill Scott even responded on him. She was like, it don't make no sense to be that talented and can sing and dance. And can mess around and rhyme too. And then they tried to come for Jill Scott. They tried to come for Jill Scott too. You live just got long. As 
as soon as you say Chris Brown, they be like, but he was a woman beater. Like he did that shit one time. He was like seventeen. Like, come on. Not make, not giving him a pass. Like, I, I think no, yeah, no, no. Not giving him a pass Mm-mm. versus saying you know people can grow from shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was the immature kid and he made a mistake. Yeah, big mistake. Like even I want to fight his ass when I seen that, but mm-hmm. but he um, but yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, bread. Ain't nothing wrong with that. All right, so um, what you think about the Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight? What you think? With every fiber of my being, I hope Tyson not too bad. I want him to so bad. I hate his brother on WWE. Like, I hate them motherfuckers. They they get him. A good they, they they get on my man. like. I respect the hustle. But oh yeah, hey. they, oh man. We get on my nerves. Um, I mean, I, I appreciate giving Mike a chance, but the other side of that is it's one of those things that if he wins, people are going to be like, oh, look at that. We got a boxer in Jake Paul. Oh, sit down, sit down. You, you got somebody who's well past their prime. Well past their prime. Jake Paul don't fight nobody for real. Not he fight NBA him. stars and has-beens and washed-ups and shit. Like motherfuckers mm-hmm. just way past their prime. Like fight somebody real. Like I like to see him fight like Garcia or somebody like that. Or um, no, I mean, like, he ain't gonna, he ain't fight somebody that can act. Yeah, fight somebody for real and see what, how you fucking land. I mean, now what I will say for him is that he does. I mean, while he's picking people who make makes it a spectacle, I I do think he does take boxing seriously. Though, if that makes sense. And like he does actual he does. boxing and himself. He, I think, to take serious. I think where yeah, he trains for it. Is the um is the the, the the opponents he selects. And I hate to admit it, but his brother is more impressive. Like on top of boxing, the WWE shit that he does. Like, mm-hmm. like I I give him credit where credits due. I mean, they do their thing. I just don't like how they act for the fucking public because I want to punch them in the face. Because it's kind of mm-hmm. like the uh. What's some two fucking boys that used to what hair was red? What was their fucking name? I'm still gonna watch it. Um, if things work out the way I want it to work out, maybe I even have a fight party. But I'm gonna see it the way the fight is gonna turn out. Um, the, the rules came out like like last week or something like that, so I'm just curious to see it. It's but I'm just glad I ain't got to spend money on it because it's not like the Roy Jones Tyson fight. Yeah. And if you spent money yeah. on that shit, you would have been pissed off. So we're gonna see where it fucking goes, man. He just trying to get his his um the Paul boys trying to get his spotlight because his brother's fucking killing it and like WWE, he really is. He's killing it. Um Okay, I got one for you now. So since you are newly retired, what has uh so what has happened that you haven't expected? What surprised you about retirement? What surprised me about retirement? Wanting to work. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, just, just simply put, wanting to fucking work. Like, it, it's times where you like, you wake up and you're like, okay, uh, times I'm so fucking bored. I was bored as hell today. Like, the boredom is is something mm-hmm. like. It's kind of like a double-edged sword where you got boredom and shit on this one side and you got mm-hmm. dealing bullshit at work on the other side. And you kind of want both. So it's um it's been an interesting fucking journey. Um but it's also giving me clarity and time to think about like actually what I want to do and what yeah, I have a I mean, passion. Yeah, you still got time to figure it out. I mean, some people only start thinking plenty, years since forty. Right. And you know, I'm at a point where I can think about what I really wanted to do because you know mm-hmm. I've been a daddy since I was fucking 17, so it's never been a chance to say, "Hey, I want to do this. I want to pursue that. Mm-hmm. I want to pursue this." I haven't had that opportunity in what am I 20 in, in like 21 fucking years been almost. Been daddy for almost all the 2000s. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Almost 21 fucking years, I haven't had an opportunity to figure out what do I really want to do for myself. Mm-hmm. So it's it's an interesting journey figuring that shit out, man. It's it's pretty fucking cool. 
It's pretty fucking cool. I saw this shit yesterday, man. It was on TikTok. Dude said it on TikTok, and I thought it was fucking interesting. And I want to see what you think about it. It said, um, pretty much, I live in a country that's like trillion dollars in debt. Um, why should I accept their credit report, basically? What you, what, so what do you think about that? Like, you know, the country as a whole is in this big debt, but this same country is still dictating what your credit score is. What you think? So I understand the sentiment. I do. However, you hear and that's just the rules. I mean, that's the game you got to play. So, I mean, just because it ain't right, I mean, just because it ain't right don't mean you can't, you can't, uh, you know, you don't have to follow along. Like, you know, I hate mm-hmm. fucking paying taxes. But that's just the way of shit that you got to do. I mean, it just is what it is. So, yeah. I mean, because, you know, credit reports are so important for more than just the interest rate you buy, you buy your car at, I mean, it just kind of is what it is. I mean, it's your job. I mean, depending on if you have a clearance or your clearance, um, if you go that route, um, even the other jobs, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's important. I mean, but then the other thing that's frustrating about once you understand, like, the credit report and what it really is and how it works, or your credit more accurately, it's a game, man. It's really a game. And that is But who's winning and who's but, losing? Clearly, I mean, you you're winning if you can keep if you can play the game. Basically, I mean, if you understand the rules to the game and can play the game, you're winning. I mean, because yeah. if you can have a good credit score, go walk out and go get some land with no money down. You feel me? Regardless of if you can, you know, regardless if you say, you know, you regardless of if you say, let's say I have a 400 credit score, but I got a million dollars in the bank. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus you, who has an 820 credit score, but ain't got no cash in the pocket at all. You know what I'm saying? There, there's things that credit can allow you if you play the game properly that it doesn't allow me. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast. Indeed. So if he's not Indeed. wrong, and, and I mean, and there's a whole bunch of, um, what's the word I want? Dualities, if you will, of things that you know don't necessarily seem fair, but it just kind of, it's the way it is. Fair enough, you can either fair. spend your time bitching about it, or you can get yourself educated so you can play too. So would you play two or leave? Play two. I mean, right now I'm playing two. But if you had the opportunity to play or leave, which one would you do? I mean, there's probably times in both. I mean, if you asked me a year ago, it was definitely leave. But leaving in all this cracked up. To yeah, there's, and there's you, better and there's worse all over. Yeah, I mean, you see all these expats who think that the, the way to go is to, to leave and start a new life and then realize that it ain't all they thought it was going to be and end up coming back. So, yeah, I mean, I think right now my goal is to, you know, Stack my monopoly pieces. Indeed. Got a pad to go. Yeah. So I'm trying to get to the point where I ain't got a pass, so I can just hang out in free parking and collect collect my money. All right, so last thing I got, bro, and I think I'm done, is um so the thing that happened in, in Carolina over the past couple of days. Um, it's been all over social media and things like that. I haven't what read too deep. Carolina. Um, where where the brother killed like four police officers. Oh, okay, okay. Truck, but he was serving the warrant. Um, so there's both sides I've seen. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, you got one side. We stand with brother. What's his name? I, I'm sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. I don't know his name. But you got the, I stand with what's his name. He stood on business. He did this. He did that. He did this. And then on the other side, it's got, oh, he took the lives of these many people over a warrant, blah, 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 blah. Like, what do you think of that? Like, 
in his current situation, he he had a warrant, and you you got his shit split on both sides right now. You got highly melanated people like, yeah, I stand on business, fuck that, fuck the police, all this other shit that they're on. But at the same time, you got these officers that just had to wake up in the morning and go to fucking work, and knowing that this is what was on the schedule for the fucking day, and they lost their fucking lives, man. So what do you think about all of that? I mean, I think it's one of those things where it, it's a function of your fight. You know what I'm saying? If you think, what did what we say, all cops are bad, mm. then okay. But, I mean, for me, it's one of those where I'm hesitant to actually be like, I support somebody. Because if you support and find out he wouldn't shit, you know what I mean? Mm. Then it makes you look, you look stupid. And I mean, it's also, and, and if that's the case, it's one of those things that perpetuates those that support, you know, the thin blue line or whatever. It's like, see, see, here's the case right here. This is what we were trying to tell you. This is why they act why they, the way they do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate that. But at the same time, like, you got to realize that it's not all, you know, green. Like, for every case where it's like that, where, you know, they lost their lives and that, you know, nobody. It shouldn't be a situation where you wake up in the morning wondering if you're going to make it home. I mean, that, that shouldn't be the case. On both sides. You know? So, I, I think because of that, you, you can't stand firm on one way or the other. I mean, I, I don't think it's appropriate to stand firm on one way or the other. Um, just because, one, all the facts aren't there. And then, yeah. two, you know, it, it helps fuel their case in a lot of cases where it's like, see, there's this one station, there's this one situation because they're going to ignore, I mean, just like you have, um, there's an excessive force thing where the dog called, the, called yeah, um, the dog went after the brother and the dude was like, he had his hands up, his hands up, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, and those people who are those thin line supporters, it negates those kind of cases like that in a lot of the stuff. Mm. So I, I think it's, it's not so easy as I stand behind brother or he was wrong as hell. I mean, it's not that simple. What do you think? I mean, pretty much just like you said, I don't have enough information. Like, if he, if they went to go raid brother's house and he just committed some fucking rapes or murders or he fucking ate a fucking billy goat or some shit. I don't fucking know. Um, you know, if it's some shit that they needed to come get him for, I, I random as fuck, I know. But if it was some shit that they had to come get him for, then I, right, you know what I'm saying? We don't have everything, but you have people posting this shit on social media where it's like, oh, bro, stood on business. Bro, this, bro, that. But you don't know what the fuck they was there for in the fucking beginning. And at the same time, not every fucking cop is a fucking racist fucking asshole. I done got fucking at least five tickets between fucking Mississippi and Louisiana. So that's five different cops I had to fucking deal with. And I can honestly say that cops are not fucking complete assholes. So you don't know what the situation was, why he wasn't going to go back to determine where he was standing on business and all this other shit. But at the same time, Police need to be aware too. Y'all motherfuckers is not invincible. This is a job to y'all. Y'all come out here acting like fucking Superman or some fucking shit or Super KKK or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And you get fucking dropped. You need to fucking reevaluate your shit. You can't just come out this bitch because you got a fucking badge and a fucking gun and think you can run any fucking body and everybody is just going to comply and cower because you have a fucking belt. Hell no. Everybody gonna fucking do that shit. I mean, everybody gonna have different fucking reactions to it. And this guy right here was like, fuck that. I'm not fucking going back. I don't support any of that shit because, like I said, these officers had kids, probably. They had wives, probably. I know they had a mama or a sibling or something that's gonna fucking miss them. And if you fucking up, you need to take accountability for you fucking up. Stop fucking up. And if that's you just fucking up, don't blame the police because you fucking up. Take right. accountability of shit. Because I haven't seen what the warrant was for for them to come to his house to do all that shit. I done had the fucking uh, U.S. Marshals come to my house looking for somebody. 
Yeah. Them bitches come deep. That shit is intimidating as fuck. But at the same time, you you gotta fucking be real with your fucking self. Did I fuck up or did I not fuck up? I think that, that, that's important there. Like, like I said, I mean, it, it, it should, you, you're going to make your decision a lot of times based on your bias. And if you try to remove your bias out of it, I mean, because you could say, oh, if he just complied. I mean, there's thousands of stories of where somebody complied and just didn't make it out. Correct. You know, I mean, Correct. especially in the state where you're at right now, there's all kind of fucking going on in that state. I mean, there's, um, there's those, uh, those brothers that killed that one guy. Um, there's uh, the, the bodies that they found unmarked. Oh, not to mention that? the officer. Yeah, not to mention the fucking officer that made the fucking detainee fucking um, oh, yeah, liquors yeah, yeah, yeah. on urine know. or some yeah. shit like that that just got jammed up. Yeah, like these motherfuckers are dirty as fuck out here. I mean, and that, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, that's where, where it comes in. It's like, how do you expect me to comply when there's the possibility of that? Yeah. So, I mean, that, so, that's where it's kind of a, a tricky, I mean, I, I don't think it's a one one answer, you know what I mean? I don't think it's a... Yeah, it's not, because you don't have all the information. Because, yeah. I mean, if he stood on fucking business, like, you you think these racist ass cops ain't going to give you a fucking shot in a fucking lifetime to make it at your front door alive, you're going to do what the fuck you got to do. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you got these same cops. They got families and all this other shit. And it's, it, it's kind of like a, I guess, a catch-22, I guess. I think that's what it's called. Like, it's it's tricky, really. All right. So that was our random thoughts. Let's go right into the accessory check-in. So, brother, how are your accessories? Um, The Placencia was the Placencia, man. It was amazing, mm-hmm. man. The, um. It went real good with the Maker's Mark. I actually been saving the Maker's Mark for this. So <laughs> I just cracked it open today, fresh bottle, man. So it was amazing. Fresh man. bottle, man. Yeah, the fresh bottle. How about you with your goddamn aluminum foil cigar and all the other shit? <laughs> so it was pretty good until the end. So I had, um, it started to kind of, un- the wrapper started coming apart and it started to get, kind of almost explode on me. So normally I would have smoked it a little further, but I had to give up on it because it exploded on me. And uh, oh, damn. I don't know, letting it sit on the humidor a little bit would have helped it. But I mean, it's a good cigar. I mean, definitely a good cigar. I'd definitely like to try another one. And, and the whiskey, I've never had any interaction with this brand. Um, they've got one that's pretty expensive. Because of this one, I'd be interested in paying to try that. So mm. not bad, not bad. And together, definitely a good pairing. Good shit, good shit. Good. Except for the cigar fucking doing what it yeah. did. But, you know. but again, yeah, it happens sometimes. All right, man, you got any spoken word for the people or anything before we wrap up? Um, Nothing like quote-wise, but you know what I'm saying? I just hope that your ancestors guide you for whatever path you're trying to cross. And do your fucking best, man. Don't give up regardless of what situation is coming your way because... Situations are gonna fucking come. You're gonna have good with days and bad days. You just gotta keep pushing. All right, all right, baby. So as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other. This is episode 120 in the books. Uh check out the screen for some of the other episodes. And I guess during the brief hiatus, you'll see some shorts, you'll see some clips, and we'll go from there. Yes, sir. We'll see you guys when we come back. We'll be back.